Hello everyone and welcome back to Handmade Hero. Uh, we were right in the middle of working on the renderer here. Uh, we wanted to pull it out into something that could be used as a standalone system. And we did a bunch of that work in the first stream of the day. This is the second stream of the day. Now it's time to take a look uh, at how to get the, uh, for lack of a better term, how to get the integration between Handmade Hero and the renderer out into something more separable. Um, there are very few things that the renderer actually cares about as far as Handmade Hero is concerned. So it's not very difficult to pull them apart except for the one part where they do kind of care, which is the texture uh, system. So really our job now is to make that texture system something that is optional and can be uh, used through sort of a generic access API that anybody's asset system could play nicely with, uh, including handmade heroes, obviously, but also other people who may want uh, to use the renderer. That is the goal. So what I did is I just started by trying to include the renderer uh, in here uh, to see what would happen. If we, if we build it here, uh, you can see <clears throat> uh, that if we want to start calling the render group calls, which we do eventually want to start calling, that's how we get information to the renderer, uh, they are not defined. If I define them, then you can see this is where we left off. Uh, if I define them by including handmade renderer uh, .cpp, so we can actually use those functions, then you see we start to have all these problems accessing things that we don't uh, know, we, we don't have the information necessary to access. Uh, and so on. So that's really what we need to start looking at here uh, and start getting uh, into a, a more refined uh, sort of setup. All right. So as you've seen me ping pong back and forth as we're doing this, the reason for that is very straightforward. Uh, essentially when you're working on uh, tuning a piece of code to get it into a good state for reuse uh, and working out what API should be and working out how to what goes where. Uh, there's two sides of the problem. There's the, the working with the code that exists to make changes that allow it to be clearer, better segmented, uh, less integrated with other pieces of code that you don't want to integrate it with. There's that part. And there's the other part, which is figuring out what the outer API is, figuring out how people outside the code talk to it. And so you constantly want to be ping-ponging back and forth between these and bringing them up together. That's why I have a lot of things in flight right now. I can build the test bed, I can build the game, and I can look at what happens between those. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the game where everything is, is locked in like this, start to pull it apart like this, and then when I feel like I have something that's sort of what I want to start working with on the external API side, then I'll ping pong back to the render test bed, right? So I'm working with those two things uh, basically as sort of a way of gradually working the code. Uh, code. You know, coding is a lot more like cooking than people would like to admit. Right, it's kind of like, oh, I'm kneading the dough now, now we're gonna let it rise, right? There's all these steps uh, and things to understand. It's a very active process. And I feel like that's why streaming coding is, and watching people code is so important because you, you lose a lot of that when you read these sort of stolid books that don't really, they're like, here is how you design a piece of code. Like, no, it, no, no one's designs pieces of code that way that are any good. Like this is how you do it. You have to work the code see how it goes, and then you end up with something really nice at the end. It's, it's no doubt that when you read these books, you look at the code that they end up with, and you're like, that's terrible. Uh, anyway, so what you want to do uh, is understand where the right place is to work at any given time. I'm uh, going to go ahead and say at the moment uh, that I want to be back in Handmade Hero proper, uh, and I want to do some uh, sort of separation of that code and see where I want that boundary to lie. So I'm popping back over here to Win3D Handmade. I can run the game like this and see what's going on in it. That's what I want there. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the renderer, and uh, I want to kind of look at what is and is not actually part of the renderer, okay? Because there are definitely things in here right now that aren't really part of the renderer. So for example, all of this stuff like the render setup 
and the texture quads and the blend targets, the clearing, the light transfer, object transforms, camera transforms, render transforms. These are all things that are generally useful. Anyone who's gonna use this render is gonna to want to use them and that's good. There's a bunch of other things that really aren't that interesting that really don't make a lot of sense uh, to people who are using the, the render necessarily. And that's why like, if we look at something like the render group, what you can sort of start to see is that pretty soon, we probably wanna talk about the render group as something that's two stage, right? We probably wanna start splitting it up so that the render group is maybe something that's only part of Handmade Hero. And we can reintroduce that render group file if we want to, right? but such that we have things that operate on just the renderer part of things and then things that happen in Handmade Hero that also use the renderer, right? And we kind of want to start thinking about what those are. Don't ask me why Draw Rectangle Quickly is in here. I don't know. Uh, is there a reason why that had to be there? No. Um, so what I want to do is start looking at that uh, as, as something to sort of uh, fixate on. Uh, and we're gonna kind of, we're, we're gonna uh, get a little bit further down. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit further down that rabbit hole as we go. All right, so I'm gonna start with basic things, gonna start with really basic things. Uh, here's the handmade uh, software renderer, right? Uh, and I wanna keep this around, cause like I said, I do wanna update it eventually uh, into something. Where did that, what's, go, what's going on here? What did I, I broke something. I want, oh, I'm in the wrong directory, that's why. Handmade renderer software dot H. Okay, there we go. Um, I do want to update this eventually, so I don't want to get rid of it, but what I do want to do is make sure that things that are related to the software renderer are only in the software render uh, files, right? So for example, this tile render work stuff here, this is not something that ever gets used in any of the other renders. It's specific to the software renderer. So it really belongs out here, right? Uh, and so that's like so something we wanna be aware of. We wanna start looking through here and make sure that we don't have things sitting around uh, inside the, the, uh, the renderer stuff that's you know, acting like it's something generic uh, but that really isn't, right? That, that is really actually not generic uh, and that's actually something uh, that, uh, you know, that, that we uh, should, should be putting exclusive to some place, uh, to one place or another. Uh, so I'm kind of looking at, at those things as we go. So looking through here, you know, we've got these push buffer things, push render element. Uh, we've got this get bitmap uh, din stuff, right? We've got uh, the store color, get current quads. A lot of these things do have good reason to be here, certainly, um, and that's all fine. We got push quads, push bitmaps, uh, some of these, and you can start to see here, you know, we start to get to things that maybe might be handmade hero specific. Uh, nothing in here is specific though so far uh, to the software renderer or hardware renderer, so that's good, right? That's totally fine. And we don't really need to think about that too much, right? Okay. Uh, this coordinate system stuff and environment map stuff we're just not using anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those uh, as well. <clears throat> just make sure that those are not uh, still taking up any mental space there. Uh, these sort of things here, this is more mathy, you know, this fit camera distance and this unproject stuff. Uh, this is kind of a little bit more math mathy. Um, and so I kind of want that to be moved out to the math uh, library anyway. And, uh, and so I, I, I may want to start pulling these out and just have these pass what they want to pass. Uh, that, that might start happening. If you look at these, these are already totally uh, math, math only anyway, like this stuff uh, is all math only. There's, there's no non-math stuff in there. There's no accessing the render group. I'm also going to get rid of some of these. I don't, we don't really need inlines anymore. It's kind of old habits of mine that we have inlines at all. We probably don't really need them. They could all be internal. Um, the compiler pretty much does inlining for you and doesn't really like to pay attention to your inlines anyway. So it's kind of one of those things that I still do out of habit to kind of tell myself it's an inline function, um, but we really don't need that to be in there a lot of times. So uh, it's kind of questionable in that sense. All right, so anyway, uh, as we look through here, we got these sort of uh, render calls. Most of these look good. They're, you know, depth peel, whatever. They're sorts of stuff that 
uh, we expect to be there. Get the push lighting. All of that stuff looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, there's a couple map things that I might want to pull out a little further, but for now, these are the only two that were just pure map. So we got rid of those. We got rid of the one that was only for software rendering. Uh, we also have this R equal here. I might, I'm probably gonna move that out. I want to make sure I've got a good um, understanding here of what is and is not uh, functions in here. Like these are all functions, right? You can see that here. Um, and uh, and then in here we've got stuff that's that's uh, uh, structs and so on, right? And, and so I want to make sure that we we've got that stuff under control. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of. Uh, take a look at these and just make sure that we've we've got those segregated uh, nicely into two different groups there. There we go. Um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, yeah, that all looks fine. Um, and now we're just left with our structural stuff, right? So now if we were to move this stuff uh, into the CPP file, uh, that would all be fine, except it kind of can't quite do that yet for some of these because they're actually using the platform layers and we haven't quite gotten to the point where both of them uh, can, uh, where both our test bed and our platform layer uh, for Handmade Hero uh, can actually include this file. So I'm gonna leave them uh, like this for a moment. What I am gonna do here is you can see these like get standard camera uh, on transform stuff. I'm gonna move those into the CPP file here uh, as well temporarily. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and compile here to make sure that still works okay. Just taking a look here. So you can see here we want uh, the, the tile render work stuff in here in the software render. Um, the only reason it's not seeing that is because the software render here uh, doesn't actually include its, its H file. Uh, so let's make sure that's in there, right? Uh, and we can put that really wherever we want. Uh, it may make more sense to put it in the actual uh, place where it's used. Right, so the, the software render is, is only really called in the Win32 platform layer. Um, so you can see right here, if I just wanted to include it before we use it, we can do that as well. All right, uh, so again, just going in and uh, continuing to, to work on this code a little bit. I think these two need to stay out for the moment, but they will move down uh, as well. So I'm gonna go now start to work on these. Uh, since these pieces are kind of, um, I'm not sure how I feel about having to continue to do type defs here. I really don't want to do that. Uh, so I think I'm going to kind of start doing uh, this sort of thing uh, where it's like, look, uh, I'll go through and see if anyone is still trying to link it with this stuff in C. Um, I don't know that anyone is. I think there are people who are doing like ports to Swift or something. Uh, and so I, I'm going to go with non type defs for the moment. Uh, in these sort of external files, and we'll kind of cross that bridge again if we come to it. Uh, that's a separate sort of thing where you want to maintain C linkage for certain things. I don't really want to get into that right now, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of ignore that part. All right. So now what I want to do is take a look, and I want to isolate the parts that are actually talking about loaded bitmap as a thing. Um, I want those things to sort of be a little bit more specific here. Uh, and I want to go ahead and, uh, and make sure uh, that we know exactly where we're actually talking about loaded bitmap, okay? Um, so if I wanted to get rid of loaded bitmap in this H file entirely, for example, and move it in uh, somewhere else, right? Uh, then the place that I really am looking, that the place where we're really hitting a, a, a little bit of a, um, of a snag with it, right, is that... Uh, inside here in the game render commands, that's someplace where we uh, record uh, these, these bitmaps that we're using, right? So what I wanna know fundamentally about those is when we actually use them in an actual render scenario, how are they actually getting used, okay? So I wanna look at how we're using loaded bitmap here and I wanna know exactly what aspects of loaded bitmap are actually getting used? That's my, my big question, okay? Um, and what I'm hoping is that all we're really using is like the texture handle uh, in the case uh, of the OpenGL side. Uh, and I don't care what we're using on the software render side because I know how to make that work. So I just wanna see on the OpenGL side uh, what we're actually using there. 
So I'm just going to look quickly to see, uh, like, let's look at quad bitmaps and white bitmap and just see. So you can look, you look at where we're using that. It's so nice. There's almost nowhere uh, that we're using those at all, right? It's just, it's really clean. So I think the first thing that we can probably do is switch from having loaded bitmaps in the stream to having something more abstract uh, than that in the stream. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. And the reason for that is this is the place where we, where we now have to, this is the place where we're starting to earn our money, right? Uh, by the way, f full disclosure, I only ate part of my lunch. My lunch was three, three chicken thighs and this little gentleman right here. I don't know what it is. It was a donut of some kind. And we're just hoping that we get lucky. Now yeah, that's all right. It's a supermarket donut, so I don't go in with high expectations, but I'm, I'm all right with that. All right, so we'll continue to work on that as a crucial part of our day. Now, what I want to start doing now is appreciating the fact that what we did, so, so how we got here in the first place, right? You can understand why the render looks like it does currently. We originally had a software renderer. The software renderer wanted to use loaded bitmaps. So that's what we were working with. Then we had a hardware renderer. So now we need texture handles, which are a graphics card thing. So what we did is we just grafted the texture handle onto our loaded bitmap. And you can see that right here, right? You can see where we did that. Totally reasonable thing to do. I have no problem with it. But if you think about what's going on there, it's not really what we want, okay? Because what it does is it assumes that you're sort of always running the software re renderer as well as the hardware renderer, right? Because really a loaded bitmap is the, is, is the equivalent. So GPU has a texture that we upload to. Loaded bitmap is like the uh, software version of that, right? So really what we want is we want two separate texture systems here. The software renderer should have an upload to it and the graphics card should have an upload to it. And even though the software's upload will just be loading in the information from loaded bitmap directly, we still want to split those out so that we're not talking about what is effectively the software renderer's bitmap format in the hardware renderer, which cares not at all about that particular thing. Okay. So that's what we're trying to work towards now is this understanding of what is and is not part of each renderer and how do we unify those behind an API that makes sense for everyone, regardless of which one they're using, okay? So that's where we're going. And it's gonna be a big push, could take us all stream to do at least, uh, but that's what we're doing. Let's just get another one of these in here. Mm. Oh, that's definitely working for me. All right, so bring it back around. <clears throat> I need a napkin. That's here we go. I got one. Good. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> what I want to do here is change this to something that is basically storing texture handles. So for example, uh, what I want to do is say we have render commands and then I want to have like a render texture like this. And this is basically going to be a blind uh, piece of information. So I do want the game to be able to work with these and be able to push them directly on as it writes. Um, but then I want some way of having them work themselves out in a cleaner way uh, than, than uh, I, I don't want the game to know what's in them, right? I just kind of want it to be blind. Now, what we're going to start with here is we're going to start with a U64. Why am I going to start with a U64? I'm going to start with a U64 because I want to stuff pointers in there as a temporary workaround, potentially, right? 
So I'll be able to stuff pointers, handles, whatever. Eventually, we're gonna make this uh, handle simpler. It's probably gonna go all the way down to a U16 is my guess. So we're gonna compact, compact, compact that down. So this is not the end of the story, um, but for the temporary time being, that's what's gonna look like, right? Uh, and so this is just to get things started. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this render texture, I'm gonna say, okay, now we've got our textured vertex thing. That's how we report what we want to draw. Then we've got a renderer texture. That's how we say what graphical feature is slapped onto each individual quad. Uh, similarly, we have this white bitmap here. I'm getting rid of one star. Why? Because again, this is effectively going to be a pointer for now. But in the future, we're really just talking about an array of 16 bit values or something like that that we're going to use, okay? Um, so again, very important you understand all of what's going on here. Uh, we're just trying to collapse those down. Okay. So at the outset, we can literally do no work and just pass it straight through. All we have to do is recognize the fact uh, that we can cast to this and cast out. So again, I'm going to smuggle that value through just to get things working. But then my goal is to remove the concept that these are loaded bitmap pointers from it entirely and go uh, further down the road um, uh, towards making it be a separated version for, e for software render and, and hardware render and any other hardware renderer. So not just, not just for separating hardware and software, but also separating D3D, maybe we're storing a texture, a pointer to some surface thing. Uh, OpenGL, we're storing a handle, right? Like we want to be able to start talking about these things in an opaque way where you just say, I have a texture index. I don't know what it refers to. I don't know how to use it. All I say is like, look, draw with this. And that's all I can really understand. That's where we want the, the people who are using this renderer to be, right? All right. Um, so let's get that going. Uh, let's make sure everyone follows the rules. Uh, so in here where we pull one of these out, this is actually uh, a renderer texture. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly convert it to a loaded bitmap by saying, let's just pretend that it is one, right? Again, total nonsense, uh, not real, not what we're going to do um, eventually, but that this is where we're going with this, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, again, so now we need to supply those. Uh, here's that bitmap array, uh, and we can... Uh, render texture, allocate those, there we go. Uh, let's look at who else is getting stymied there. Oops, did that, what's wrong? What, what, what are you complaining about? Oh, the white bitmap, sure, no problem. Uh, we can fix that as well. Uh, this is now going to be a renderer texture uh, for white bitmap. We will fix that. Uh, so in here now, what we know is that, well, this has to be a pointer uh, to a loaded bitmap. Uh, again, uh, this is going to go away in just a second. So I'm literally just stubbing it out. This is not code we ever want in here uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, you'll see how it plays out in just a second when we get a little bit further down the line. Um, so I'm just going to make a dummy one there, and then I'm going to say that we're going to point uh, to that, like so. And then we will just initialize this uh, saucy gentleman like this, right? Uh, and so we'll keep moving on from here. Um, what are you complaining about? OpenGL white bitmap does not need to have its address taken anymore. Uh, so that's good. <clears throat> and off we go. All right, so here when we're pushing quads, again, just gonna smuggle the bitmap pointer in, even though we're totally, totally lying about that. Um, so what I wanna do here is say, all right, uh, the, you know, the handle on here is just gonna be this thing casted to a U64. Um, again, very temporary. Uh, when we're looking at push cube here, um, this white bitmap, ah, push cube. Uh, this, uh, hmm, mm, mm. 
So this gets a little harder because we want to actually convert to pushing these sooner rather than later. Uh, this actually now, in that case, wants to actually be a renderer texture. You know what I'm saying to you? Um, so this wants to be uh, done like that, right? Um, and that means that really this, this uh, part where we were writing it before, uh, if I go up to, to look at this here, this wants to do the same thing. So when we do a push quad, I want to actually just go ahead and have the, someone have to have done this upstream. So we're always just pushing on the actual texture that we're using. No, no, no more of the loaded bitmap stuff um, <clears throat> and, uh, uh, from, from here on out, right? Okay. Um, so here again, uh, we can, and, and you know what I think I should probably do here, uh, just to make this easier for us to find and fix in a second, uh, when we go to sort of uh, change this around, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like uh, render texture from. Just gonna make a little macro here. It's gonna take the bitmap pointer uh, and it's gonna do that conversion, right? Uh, so really all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna totally cheese it out. I'm just gonna say, look, I know that if I just tell, told you that this actually was a renderer texture, it's just got one thing in it, which is the pointer. If I just convert it to the, a pointer to that and then recast down, you're gonna think it's the right thing, right? So I know like this is sufficient to turn a loaded bitmap pointer into one of these render textures temporarily. Then from there we can um, uh, we can go ahead and remove that macro and fix everything uh, as we go forward, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get that going. Um, it's renderer texture from, isn't it? Uh, so again, render a texture from here as we keep on moving. Um, render a texture from. Uh, this bitmap call here is, this is just texture uh, in all of these uh, for this push cube. So these are just texture, texture, texture. Um, all of these are just using the texture again. Yeah. There we go. Uh, the push quad, um, may need to be extended to take that. Uh, yeah. So in this case, I think we probably want this to be renderer texture, uh, as well. And <clears throat> if anyone else needs to call that, we can always make a helper function for them. All right. Uh, so this is renderer texture from right here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Initializing uh, white bitmap. Okay, that's fine. Uh, again, for push volume outline, uh, this is totally fine. You can see these line segments here. Uh, those are taking bitmap points. I might just go ahead and again, uh, make those require the person who passes them in uh, to actually have done that conversion already. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just say you got to do that. And that way, when we come through to uh, this call, I can just do render texture texture <clears throat> equals the white bitmap. Um, and then in here, I can just substitute all of these. There we go. Uh, so now let's just keep looking for more opportunities for something like that. Again, same thing here. I'm just going to go ahead and pass it. Um, directly, because now that will take the texture. Uh, in here, where we're looking at the white bitmap, same thing. Uh, so this is just going to become, oops, that's going to become renderer texture, uh, white texture. Um, and now let's continue on. This is, again, the same thing. There we go. And now, we're good to go. Um, and so now all we have to do is actually make sure that uh, the rest of our stuff is, is set up correctly here. In this case, it's not. <clears throat> uh, these are supposed to be renderer textures. Uh, so let's go ahead and make that true, like so. Uh, and this right here should be uh, allocating renderer textures like so. All right, 
<clears throat> uh, so now the question is, okay, we just kind of swapped out that type. Uh, so, but let's make sure we didn't make any mistakes. We could have. Uh, so let's make sure we still get textured rendering and we do. Um, so that's good. Uh, so now what we want to do is, is continue to push that uh, concept forward further, right? So what we want to do now uh, is we want to try and, and, and make uh, the sort of the loaded bitmap stuff become less and less and less and less relevant uh, to the actual renderer core. So what I want to do now is I'm going to move loaded bitmap um, somewhere else. And I'm just going to see uh, what ends up happening to what we include, right? So I'm just, I'm just trying to get sort of a, a more of a feel for what's going to happen here if I start to move these things out. So that's all we're doing. Uh, really straightforward. I know that's going to be a problem. That's okay. Uh, that's no big deal. Um, this here uh, last bitmap doesn't get used at all, so that can just go. Uh, it's not super relevant at all. Um, <clears throat> uh, that's just to get the texture handle. So again, I don't care about that. That's totally fine. Um, why have I? Why can't I continue down my error list here? Uh, can I get any more errors? Should be able to get some more. Here's a bunch of errors right here. How come I can't get to those? For some reason, I can't get to those errors. I'm not sure why. For a coder, why can't I jump to those errors? Um, these are all the same. Same. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so here, what you can see is now when we're looking at loaded bitmap, this is all in the software renderer. You can see all of this in the software renderer here, right? Just software renderer all day long. Um, so if I were to take uh, the loaded bitmap now and talk and have the software renderer have its own understanding uh, of what's going on with textures, then it could get the same information that it needs here out of that. So what I want to verify, and again, I don't actually know uh, what I'm looking at here, so I kind of have to uh, take it slowly, but I want to see to what extent we ever actually look behind a bitmap, right? Uh, so what you can see is here is one place where we use that align percentage and the width over height, right? So that's kind of an important bitmap piece of information. Um, and here it looks like this, what is this for? Oh, so the, yeah, right, okay. So this is just for making sure that we're talking about the right region uh, of the texture in question, which is, again, pretty basic. So it seems like we're kind of in reasonable shape here. There's very little we actually do with these. So in terms of where we actually pass them in, um, right here, where we do our get bitmap dim, uh, really it's just, and, in, and that's really only happening in one place, right? So that can kind of be moved and welded in there to one call. I'm gonna do that. Let me make sure first. Uh, that that's only happening in one place. Now we got one more here. Um, this is for our tech stop. <clears throat> so it's using X, Y, and size. Just wanna see what those are. Oops. Uh, so what are x, y, and size? Size is just the height times the width over height, right? So that's just that multiply. Um, and x, y is the alignment adjustment. I can't say I so the only reason we're doing that part really is so that we can ask about these before they're used so I think 
I'm pretty happy with everything I'm seeing here. And I think what I want to do is pull these two out into something that's in handmade here or proper so that everyone just goes through the case where you've already converted it to a texture, right? Uh, I think that's what I want to do, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and try that. <clears throat> uh, so if we take get bitmap dim out of the running here, uh, skip all of this stuff that's happening. Uh, put this right here. Um, push bitmap with a bitmap ID is what converts it to a loaded bitmap. So that's also handmade hero specific, right? So all of these are handmade hero specific. I'm just going to drop them down here. There's our push cube. There's our push lighting. Uh, push volume outline does not require any of that stuff. Um, push font does. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop that up here. <clears throat> push rect does not. And outline doesn't. None of these do. Unproject doesn't. None of this stuff does. None of these do. None of these do. None of these do. None of any of these do. Uh, and so what we can kind of see here is that really, uh, with the exception of push lighting, which is a little bit special, uh, everything, below, everything below this line is really uh, handmade hero specific, right? Uh, and everything above it doesn't need loaded bitmap. So you can see like this is really the part that we want to put in there um, for handmade hero's sake. Uh, that's just special purpose code for handmade hero. Um, and then we can uh, not have any of that in our, in our renderer that we sort of uh, send out to the rest of the world. Mm. Mm. It's a pretty good donut. Now, um, we need to continue to uh, we need to continue down this road a little further. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to find out kind of how loaded bitmap. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by making something that really only works the harder render at the moment, and then we'll stub out what would need to happen for the software renderer, and then we'll kind of tie them together. Uh, so looking back here, uh, remember we kind of have this uh, stuff that um, uh, now needs to know about loaded bitmap. Um, we've got it in the software renderer, uh, and we've also got it in the uh, in in handmade renderer here. Um, that's you know needs to know about the asset system. So this handmade hero specific part of things, I want to pull out to a different file. Uh, that only gets included in Handmade Hero. So it's not going to get included uh, anywhere else, right? So that way, the hand, you know, this renderer stuff is the part that we want to pull out. Um, so I want to have like something that's sort of like handmade specific rendering or something, or, or like, uh, I don't know, uh, there might be a place where I can, where I, that I already have that it would make sense to put it. Um, it could be that it's, it would be good in the asset system. I don't know, because the asset system is the thing that actually understands these. Uh, it feels a little weird, though, to do that. Um, and so I, I really just don't know where that should go. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not sure how, how I feel about it. Um, I really just don't know. What I'm 
gonna do up front is I'm just gonna put this in there for now. Um, I don't really like that. Handmade asset rendering. I like the sound of that. There we go. Um, and so this is stuff that has to do specifically with our style of assets, right? Our lighting, our bitmaps, our fonts, not someone else's, right? Um, and so I'm gonna make this our own special sauce here, right? This is our own, this is our own deal. Uh, and so then what I'll do is now I'll include that over in handmade.cpp, uh, oops, handmade.cpp. Uh, and uh, so after the asset system gets included, uh, it can just be in here, handmade asset rendering cpp. Uh, and we can clean that up more as we go later. It's not really a big deal uh, one way or the other. Okay. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to make it so that we can actually work with this directly. Um, now we've got all these things in here, uh, like in the software renderer that need to know about the loaded bitmap. Uh, that's actually fine because what we can do is look at where that software renderer is actually being included. Um, I don't actually know that we need to... Uh, like, I'm just trying to think of how we want to do that. I, I don't really want to deal with that at the moment, I guess is what I'm saying, right? I, I want to not really have this uh, be happening at the moment. Um, And so you can, yeah, okay. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and convert these the way that I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go full pull to what I think should be happening here in the first place, right? Okay, uh, so if I take handmade renderer software uh, and handmade renderer hard um, software.cpp and whatever, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna make a version of this instead of using loaded bitmap, which has literally nothing to do with that, I'm gonna take that instead and just make it look like what it should look like, right? Something like this. Um, and so, you know, software texture, I don't know. This is a special piece of information only for software rendering. Um, and it's specific to the software renderer, right? Now what I wanna do is make it so that all the rest of this stuff, instead of working off of loaded bitmaps, is actually gonna work off of software textures, which are a different thing and have nothing to do with the loaded bitmap anymore. Um, so then in here, I want software texture for basically everything, right? All of this stuff is all gonna work over off of software textures. That's just how it works. Uh, and we're gonna go from there. Okay. So now I'm gonna start by like making that stuff work okay. I'm gonna skip this part with the white texture for now uh, and just look at the software render side of things. And of course, I don't know, Forcoder has a, some kind of weird issue with not part, if you try to jump to an error before the buffer's done, it like doesn't catch all the errors or something. This is an older version of Forcoder. It may already be fixed. I should probably update the one we've got. Uh, anyway, so looking at these now, what I wanna do is make sure that we change all of these to software textures. Uh, let's just make sure that's the case. Uh, and then compile, and I think we may be down to just, now I think we probably just work. Yeah, we do. Um, so that's really all I needed. And the reason I want to do that again is because the, the loaded bitmap, we were just reusing that, but it wasn't really a loaded bitmap. Uh, these things were just little back buffers that the, that the um, software renderer was using. So we want to just now actually recognize the fact that that is what that actually is, right? So moving back to the hardware renderer side of things, what I'm going to do now is now I'm gonna make it so that the hardware renderer actually expects just the texture handled directly, okay? So what that means is now, when we go into the uh, loaded bitmap side of things, right? This is not gonna be a texture handle anymore. It's going to actually be the renderer texture, 
that's backing this thing, right? So now we don't actually need a loaded bitmap in there because we won't actually be using one anywhere. Uh, we can now treat these as actual render textures directly. Okay. So I'm going to grab the texture handle here and then what I can do, or I guess just texture here. And then what I can do is use this handle directly, right? Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. No more loaded bitmap. Okay. That's, so that's, that's where we're going with this, right? See what I'm saying? Uh, so now our white bitmap is not really a white bitmap anymore. Our white bitmap is really just this allocated texture, right? Uh, we don't uh, we don't need any of this anymore because no one's ever going to actually use it, right? Uh, so now we can just say, hey, uh, the white bitmaps handle, oops. right, is just what we allocate when we do an OpenGL texture allocate. And I'm going to look at that uh, call here. Hold on one second. Uh, you can see what happens. We get back a void star. And you can guess what I'm about to do here. Instead of a void star, what we're actually going to be returning from now on is a renderer texture, right? So when it allocates one of these, it allocates the renderer texture uh, by saying, here is the result, the result handle. Uh, is now going to be equal uh, to whatever uh, we actually generated. No more pointer fiddling. Okay. So now when we call OpenGL allocate texture, instead of getting back a void star, we're actually going to get back uh, a renderer texture. That's what we want. So that's good. Uh, and in here where we're doing our texture management stuff, you can see here we're getting the handle out of this and whatever. We don't actually want to do that anymore either. Uh, all we really need to do uh, is say, look, the handle that we were trying to delete is this handle. It just happens to be 64 bits uh, instead of 32. So cast it down and have a party be my guest. All right. Uh, so now when we do this allocate result handle thing, now we got to get into the situation where uh, we've got these texture ops. That's again going to be something we're cleaning up, simplifying. Everything is getting better as we do this. It's good. Uh, right, we're happy. This stuff here now wants to be done like this. Here is the place where the renderer texture gets set. Here is the renderer texture uh, that we are removing. Uh, like so, okay? Uh, and so again, all I'm doing here is just making it so that now we're streamlining this process and just really actually uh, pointing to what we... Um, what we actually wanted to in the first place. Uh, the renderer texture is going to have to move up because now these people are actually talking about it. Uh, again, totally fine. It's a core uh, piece. Of, it's a core component. That's totally good. Uh, and it's all good. Here's that result texture. Um, here's the deallocation. I think it's just texture. Um, cannot convert from renderer texture dot handle though. You can, and there we go. Okay. So when we actually allocate this white bitmap, now we can just do it like that. So we want a one and one by one white bitmap. Back comes the handle. Done deal. Now no need to actually get into that whole situation anymore. Uh, the result texture here is just going to be the thing that we get uh, that we're you know writing into the bitmap for. Um, and so now what we need to do, uh, besides just clean that up, yeah. Um, now what we need to do is just make sure that these are initialized properly. Uh, here's the, the bitmap texture. I just want that to end up getting cleared. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is just to set the handle to zero here probably. The thing is, since this is arbitrary, I probably want to just do it like this, just to make sure um, that uh, it's in the render itself, just to make sure 
um, that we have a known way to clear these to zero that, that in case we end up doing something else when we need to clear them um, will work, if that makes sense. Uh, so this is texture handle equals zero, right? Um, and that should be fine. Just blow this out to an actual function. Uh, so that way, it just we know when people are doing that. Uh, I don't really want them to kind of be, yeah, you know, go, uh, you know how it is. All right. Um, so now that we've got that texture stuff straightened away, uh, I want to see if it works at all, right? Because uh, I don't know if it will or not. Um, so let's go ahead and run and see if we get anything. So we've got a problem here, right? Uh, you can see that we didn't we didn't do something correctly, so that's why I just wanted to run this and, and uh, debug it now. Um, what we'd like to do is see what the error was. Uh, invalid operation. So presumably, yeah. So here we must have just had something. Yeah, that texture handle was obviously bogus, right? You can see it being bogus right here. Um, so we need to start going back in now and tracking these down. Make sure that when we push these on here, we're pushing them on here in a sensible way. Now, I think, hopefully, maybe, I don't know, uh, that I actually did this kind of um, uh, more sensibly here. So I'm hoping that, uh, that this part uh, will now allow us to fix, because remember, we were just casting the pointer. We now actually know what we need to do. We need to take that bitmap pointer and we need to actually look at the texture handle. That's what we're actually trying um, uh, to write in there now, right? Uh, so I think, oops, this has to be uh, captured. So I'm hoping that that's like mostly the only thing we, we have to fix. Uh, I don't actually know if it is or not, but we'll see. Yeah, so there you go. Okay. So again, what we did there is really nice and clean. We just said, look, uh, we're using textures from now on. Those texture handles are going to come back from the renderer. Anytime you talk to the renderer, you have to talk in terms of texture handles. Uh, and here's how you do that. And so we did that and now we're good to go. What we can do now is we can also go ahead and move forward and say, we can get rid of this entirely. We don't need to have that because now it's a very straightforward, obvious call. It doesn't have any kind of weird semantics to it or casting. It's just saying, hey, you use the texture handle of the bitmap you've got. Very clean, very easy, and we can just put that right in line, right? Okay, so now what I want to do, again, popping back, I'm going to pop back to our Win32 render test. I'm going to see if I can start to include uh, the whole renderer now. <clears throat> and we'll just see where we're at, okay? Uh, what it looks like to me is we're pretty good to go everywhere except the lighting. Uh, and what you can see here is this push cube uh, call where we've got the lighting and we're pushing all the lighting on, that, that's really uh, causing us a problem, right? And so, we have some decisions to make here. Um, <clears throat> One of the difficult things uh, that we have to figure out how to do is to make our lighting a little bit more general anyway, right? And so I probably want to pull that handmade lighting stuff out uh, and let that be part of the render as well. And hopefully, you know, eventually get the lighting really good so that you would just generally use it, right? Um, we're not really at that point right now. But I think I want to leave the lighting in the renderer. So I think like handmade lighting uh, .cpp, I really want to probably push that into the renderer. I think that's fine. Um, and so I might just kind of go ahead and uh, put these in there uh, and let the lighting solution be part of, you know, the, the actual process, right? And we'll clean it up because um, we want the lighting to be good. We want to continue down the road to good lighting. So I think that's probably what I would prefer. Now I don't really remember what lighting surface gets used for here because it's been a long time. Look, uh, a long time since we've looked at that at all. I was gonna say, do we even use it anymore? It looks like we don't. Um, 
But of course, I'm not sure because, uh, let me see here. Yeah, we don't. So lighting surface is not a thing anymore. Uh, we're just using lighting boxes. So we can get rid of that. And then we're kind of just down to these uh, here, right? So we've just got these two uh, pieces of information, the lighting point state and the lighting box there uh, that we use for uh, pushing those on. So what I could do is say, all right, those pieces of information, because we do use those for pushing the lighting on, let's put those into the render at the moment. Let's we'll think about it a little harder as we go, uh, but that's basically, you know, that stuff would need to be in there. Uh, let's put that in there and see what happens. Light points per chunk, uh, light points per chunk needs to be in here as well. And off we go, okay? Um, so now we can actually start calling things inside our Win32 uh, render test. So here I should be able to actually put these in here uh, and see what happens. Uh, that's the game. Here's the render test. Now, I'm not actually seeing the clear color that we used, um, but I don't really know if our clear does anything anymore. Um, so there is that. Uh, that's one of the things I would kind of like to look at is cleaning up some of the semantics of the renderer once we've got it uh, like isolated, right? Because uh, it's a little weird right now because we added kind of these things uh, where we're doing the, the begin depth peel and, and end depth peel stuff. So what I kind of want to do is just go look at world mode for how we're using it currently. Uh, do we push a clear on ever? Uh, oops, it's push full clear. Um, so yeah, we do. Uh, we push the full clear on. Right before we output the lighting points, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Just in case anyone was wondering, really doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, so we, uh, stuff we want to fix. Uh, we will be doing a bunch of nice cleanup to this, which will help Handmade Hero as well, because it's you never really want your stuff to be kind of to go through too many iterations without a cleanup pass. Um, so I think that'll be good. All right. So maybe this full clear is just, maybe the reason that happened at the end was to get it ready for the debug display. I don't really know, but I'm gonna go ahead and just copy exactly what we were doing here. Um, pretty much by the book. Um, So it looks like you just need the depth peel section to actually be there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's good. That all looks fine. Uh, and so now what we want to do is kind of get a little bit more playful with it here. Uh, the full clear. So curious, the full clear that was in here is for what? Oh, it's for the lighting test. So this doesn't really need to be here. Uh, at all. Um, so we can really just do this, right? So there's our renderer uh, executing completely outside the game now. Um, and what we can do now is, is do some testing with that. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to set up a, a camera, right? Uh, um, you know, something, a simple camera so we can see things. Um, so let's take a look at how that normally works, right? We've got here the uh, set camera transform stuff, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, this exact thing that we were using. Uh, and I'm probably gonna simplify it a bit because we don't need to do all of it um, at the moment, but you know, so just so we know what's going on here. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the get width of the draw region here. 
I, I've got my pitch, my orbit, my dolly. Uh, we've got the background color, near clip plane, uh, far clip plane. Don't know what debug light P is doing there. We don't need it anymore, certainly. Uh, so then we've got our camera orbit, our camera pitch. Uh, delta from sim is not relevant to this renderer. Uh, camera zero. Uh, we need the camera offset in here, uh, but really we don't. I mean, it's not going to do anything. Uh, there's the camera dolly. Here's the focal length. We need to know what that focal length is. Um, where are we getting this camera from? There it is. It's the get standard camera params. All right, so we can do that just fine. Um, Why is debug light P getting passed to set camera transform? That's got to be old news. Yeah, get rid of that. Um, just trying to clean this up a little bit here. I suppose this is not really important. You know, we can just say that's the new and far clip plane. Render group undeclared identifier. That is true. Um. Debug light P, unless that actually is getting used somewhere. It might be uh, for pushing the light on later, so we'll leave that. Uh, we'll get that, and then I think we are good. Yes. Uh, okay, so here we've got, in theory, a camera transform set up, and now we can start drawing things, presumably. Uh, we will see in a moment if that's actually true. Uh, I will push a cube. I will push a nice little, uh, tiny little cube. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. So in here, we begin the depth peel and the end the depth peel there. Here is our push cube. Uh, there's the group. Uh, we want that probably white texture, right? Um, the cube will be here. It'll be one by two by four, just to make it sort of monolith-esque. Uh, we'll set a color. The color can be cyan for now. Uh, the emission will be nothing, uh, and it will not have lighting enabled. Well, that's anticlimactic. I was kind of hoping to see a cube. I don't know about you. Um, so we got a couple things we got to debug now. Uh, first of all, we don't really know if this is rendering properly. But similarly, we don't really know if the camera set up properly either. Right? We have no idea. Um, looking at this camera dolly of zero is not going to cut it we need to be moved back from the camera. Um, so that might be part of our problem, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we did here. 
Um, you can see us kind of rotate down that way. So let me just put ourselves 10 units back. I uh, just want to take a look at what that looks like. There it is. All right. Um, so I, I believe when I uh, was talking uh, with the, the person who wanted to use the, the renderer, I believe they said they would be a little bit steeper, uh, not fully isometric, but a little bit steeper. So, so not quite handmade hero. So I'm, I'm going to try like one times pi uh, and see if that is maybe a little bit more uh, the, the angle sort of, of steepness that we're talking about here. Um, and then I'm going to convert this to being something that's actually uh, a length we might um, care about. Uh, okay. So I think that's basically what we're talking about. Our renderer is now usable outside, which is good. Uh, and I don't know what the pullback, I, I don't know like what kind of parameters are going to want to be uh, set here. It's like that disappeared into the fog. Uh, how does the fog level get set? I don't even know. Uh, we set it when we set the in, in here, right? Uh, and, you know, we've got the fog start and end distance. I guess they're just hard coded. So we're going to have to pull that stuff out. Like we, you know, that needs to be parameterized, obviously. Um, you know, we can't, we can't have that be something that's, that's set arbitrarily like that. Um, and the same is true of the clip alpha start and end, uh, like all that stuff needs to get, needs to get dealt with properly. So yeah, we could probably start down that road now. I'm trying to think to myself, how do I want to proceed? There's so many things we could do now. We've done the main work, so now it's all gravy from here on out, and there's like a ton of things we could be doing. And the question of like which one of them, which, you know, what to prioritize. Um, so I think what we want to do is rather than go down uh, to the API iteration stage of things and th start thinking about that and going, okay, how do I make this easy to use? How do I make it so that you can set uh, up scenes easily? What about the camera? Like, let's pull out stuff like these hard-coded costs for the fog distance or stuff like that. Um, rather than go that route, I think what I'd rather do is say, let's tackle texturing. Uh, texturing is an issue. Because when we're creating one of these blocks, we need to be able to say, you know, top, sides, bottom, they need to be bitmapped. Uh, they, right, they need to come from a texture. Uh, and so we want some easy way of specifying that piece of information. Now there's a lot of ways we can do that. Um, but I think that's what I would wanna focus on. So I think what I'll start by doing is say, let's go the texture route because we need to increase our ability to specify textures. And like I said at the outset, we need to now have it be so that uh, people who are using this API who aren't Handmade Hero can get their textures into the actual system. Both of those things need to happen, right? Uh, so let's get textures in. That's, I think, the most important part. Most important part after eating my donut which is definitely more important than either of those two things. All right.
Hmm. We got another blip. OBS didn't crash that time, so we're still recording, so everything should be fine. Uh, no, no panic this time. That's just uh, Twitch fun. All right. So I want to get textures in there, um, and we need to kind of think about that uh, and how we're going to do that. Uh, so what I'd like to do is get back to the just simple, yeah, I'll, I'll put the camera back someplace where the fog hasn't clipped yet, and we'll take care of that stuff later. Uh, if I run this now, right, I've just got my cube. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and switch to a just pure white cube. No color modulation at the moment. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to get texture on here. Like, I, right? Like I want to actually see a texture on here. Uh, thankfully for us, we have our own PNG loader. Lucky day, right? Uh, so we can do that. And all I have to do is just actually provide the memory arena stuff in here uh, for it to actually use. I don't actually need a memory arena, right? Um, so if you look at what's going on here, I can just instead say, oh yeah, uh, memory arenas have nothing in them, right? Um, and uh, when these actually get used, like the push size call, which you aren't finding, uh, I can actually just make that be malloc, right? Uh, so basically, push size uh, I could even make it be virtual alloc. I can just do, we already have that, right? Win32 allocate memory. This one right here. Uh, so really, if I want to, I can just make a fake thing in here for it handling memory. Um, and uh, off we go. All right. Uh, so we need the H file for it, I believe. Uh, Um, although, you know what I could do? I could also just load a BMP instead. That's actually, you know what? I like that idea much better because then I don't have to deal with any of this stuff. I like that idea a lot better. Uh, I don't actually remember. Um, it is. Uh, so if I want to use uh, this load bitmap call, I just need a way to load, like I just need like a BMP, right? Um, and we can just make one of those pretty easily that we can use as a test. Uh, so all I really need to do is have a, I need some way to do a read entire file. Thankfully, we have exactly that as well. Uh, so these can just go right on in there and, uh, and just work. Right? Um, I don't care about secure no warnings like as at all. What is F open S? Why is F open S more secure than regular F open? What am I missing here? Yeah, you know what? 
No. Forget you. Okay. Um, so we want to be able to fill one of these out here. And, uh, and we know that we have the loaded bitmap that I can use here if I want to. Um, so I can just kind of spam this in here in our test app. And again, we're assuming this is not something uh, that anyone else has to use. This is because uh, this is just something that is getting used by the test program. So this is not part of our render Paul. We don't have to care uh, if the API is any good uh, for this at all, right? Um, so that's totally fine. Um, let's see here. We do need the bitmap header, this, this right here, uh, in order to be able to load. And that has to be after we define the types. This might be in windows.h already. So we may be able to just get rid of that. Uh, but don't quote me on that. All right, so here we can load a bitmap uh, in and uh, loading in the bitmap will give us the thing we actually need to slap on to our texture. Uh, so I'm going to put a load BMP call here at the uh, outset of, uh, you know, when we're running here, just so I can get one of these in. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to do a load bitmap call. I'm just going to call this like win through to renderer test.bmp. Um, or maybe I'll call this uh, cube test.bmp, bitmap at cube texture. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make one of those. So we know that inside our art directory here, right, we've got sort of, um, we've got some of these like weird, like things for doing exactly this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this one uh, block orphanage.png. I'm going to load it uh, into uh, GIMP. I'm going to just size it down. Um, fine. Uh, I'm going to size it down uh, to just be like a simple, you know, 512 by 512 map or something uh, like that. Uh, and then I'm gonna export it to a BMP. So I'm gonna do an export as, I'm gonna go to handmade uh, data. And in here, I'm just gonna put a like, uh, probably like a render test directory. And I'm just gonna make this uh, myself cube test dot BMP. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make it be one of these. Uh, I'm going to export it. Uh, and then while I'm here, just so we don't have to do it later, I'm also going to make ourselves make us a sprite uh, of some kind, right? Um, so if I go to Krampus, maybe. Um, I'm just going to grab the Krampus head, this right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the Krampus head. Uh, 
and I'm going to grab it as a 1024 by 1024. Actually, I don't even need to do that, really. Let me just do this. Where's the crop tool? Oh, glad they changed all the icons. That looks like crop tool. There we go. Uh, and now I'm going to scale it down uh, to like 512 by 512. Oops. Uh, and I'm just going to clip off that part. There we go. Uh, so now we just have also a sprite, uh, because I also want to test putting a sprite in there, um, you know, just, just to make sure everything's working okay. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that out as well, same place. So it's gonna be in the data renderer test directory. Um, and this is going to be like, uh, you know, head test.bmp. I'm assuming this will also work. Yes, it does look like it will. Um, and that should be all we need. Uh, I might call that sprite test instead. Maybe I'll call that sprite test. So now if we look, we've got a little directory here that has the stuff in it that we actually needed. Um, what I can do is uh, now set the run directory on this particular program to be there. So when it runs, uh, the working directory will just be, wor uh, will be w handmade data renderer test. Uh, and that we now, you know, in, th in theory, if we just run to that point and load the uh, texture, it should just work, right? So we run here, uh, this should grab the entire file. And in theory, it'll give us, you know, uh, back the, you know, the, the 512 by 512 uh, bitmap and it does, right? So that's all good, uh, done deal. So now, what we would like to do now is make it so that we can submit these bitmaps uh, to the um, renderer itself and have some way that we can um, we need to start thinking about how we're working with these textures right um, so we need to think about how that's going to work we know that the card does not have unlimited storage. We know that uh, there's a limited amount of texture space on the card. And so what we want to do is kind of come up with a way of, of thinking about and managing that particular piece um, of the rendering puzzle, right? So there's two fundamental concerns that we're going to have going into this. How much time do I have? I got like 30 minutes. Um, all right. Uh, so what I would like to see here is I'd like to see us get two things out of this. One, I'd like to be able to easily talk about textures and submit them, which shouldn't be too hard because we're already kind of doing that fairly easily with the API as it is. But the other thing I want to do is to start to move towards something where the size of the texture comes in one of like three flavors or something. Uh, what I mean by that is right now we sort of have this hodgepodge of every texture can be whatever size it wants. That's not particularly useful because uh, graphics hardware wants all textures to be the same size. And when I say that, I don't really mean it. I kind of mean graphics APIs want textures to be the same size. Honestly, a lot of hardware now could, couldn't care less uh, about that. And like if everything uh, were a general purpose GPU, uh, like at NVIDIA 1080 or whatever, 
you just wouldn't care uh, because having to have all your textures be specific sizes and using handles instead of pointers into GPU memory and stuff like that, all of that is just because of old school limitations when GPUs used to not have like real memory and caches and stuff like this. Um, so to a certain extent, I don't really know that there is that much of a win to having textures be known sizes. Like, it really depends on your perspective. But in terms of running on a wide variety of machines and like phones and blah, 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 uh, there are old school power of two texture dimension limitations and wanting to be able to use lots of textures of the same dimension. So you can uh, leverage things like texture rays and stuff like that. These are actual concerns that we do sort of care about, sort of, right? So, what I would like to do is I would like to say, let's break our textures into two types. Textures that are big, like fancy cutscene, huge things and then like 512 by 512 stuff that's just used for other things like sprites and whatever right uh that's kind of where i want to see us go because then all of the things that are rendered in that 512 by 512 block those can all be rendered as a single batch that just uses a texture index to access uh the texture in question right that's a huge performance win for older cards. It's even probably a performance win even on like a fancy card like the one that's in this machine. Uh, because they, like, at least through OpenGL, it's pretty janky unless you use extensions uh, to talk about texture changes. If you use extensions, you're good to go. There's all kinds of good ways to talk about it. But uh, assuming you're just on the vanilla version we're on, there's really no good way to do it. And so we'll probably get a significant speed when I would imagine even just from this. Or we would if we were drawing enough things. We don't really draw that many things at the moment, so it's unclear, you know, that it would be that much of a win on a fast card like this, but, you know, you get the point. So that's kind of where I want to uh, see us go. Now, what that means is we sort of need two separate ways of talking about uh, what we're submitting, okay? So if we look at the render commands uh, in the renderer, what you can see uh, is we only have one push buffer that we put things on uh, where we say what we're going to be doing there, right? Uh, and if you look at the kinds of things that go into that, so if you look at what you can actually specify, we have textured quads, we have full clear, depth clear, and the begin and end peels calls, right? Then there's the lighting transfer. What I would like to do fundamentally is start having like the textured quads call, say which one of it it's doing, uh, and that way we can kind of talk about the we can kind of talk about blocks, the textured quad blocks as being of the fast kind, which is 99% of all the rendering we're doing, or the slow kind, and you can't mix them. So when you call textured quads, and then we will have two different, even two different calls, right? So like, um, we could have our textured quads here be two kinds one that takes a render setup, a quad count, and a vertex array uh, and reads out of the bitmap array, and one that actually uh, just takes quads and a, uh, a single maybe piece of bitmap information or something like this. I don't know. I'm trying to think about how I want to structure that.
I'm thinking. So here's what I think I would propose. Uh, I would suggest maybe we have our render entry textured quads uh, just takes like a bitmap size thing. So I basically say like we've got render entry textured quads, there's a bitmap size category, that's for fast draw drawing. And then maybe we have a render entry single quad that can take its own special bitmap pointer for those are for odd sized things that will go through kind of the slower way that seems more plausible to me i think that's what i'd like to see us go towards i'm going to go ahead and say uh, let's hold off on any of that at the moment anyway uh, what i want to do here is just go in and, and look at uh, uh, the texture op stuff first so let's get the texture op stuff working and we'll go from there now the way that the texture op things work uh, is these texture ops uh, get issued as a separate thing that happens uh, out of band. So I want to look at that in the game proper. I want to look at where we're doing like texture op allocate and how those are getting sent down um, just in general, right? So you can see kind of... Uh, in terms of where we're calling that. Here's like an example of us adding this op uh, to the texture op queue. And that texture op queue is like, uh, is like this special thing that the platform deals with, it's mutext, right? So you can push things on, you can like shove things onto this queue and then you know that like someone will deal with them later, right? Um, so here's where I was saying, you know, I might want this, uh, um, I won't want mutexes to be in the shared stuff. This is why I was thinking that we might want to do that. Um, because you may want these things to be mutex so that background loading will just, will work. Uh, so I think I'd like to go ahead and clean, you know, pull this sort of together now. Um, so how is this gonna work? Well, uh, for starters, inside handmade renderer.cpp, uh, this add op call here, this actually can be something that's shared. Uh, right when we're submitting one of these textures we don't have to know anything about which renderer we're using we're just queuing up stuff here uh, like and everyone can use the same one as far as I can tell right uh, so I believe this add op could easily be in in here and this platform texture op queue, well, you know, that's really not a platform texture op queue per se, right? It's really a renderer texture op queue. You know what I'm saying to you? Um, so like the plat the fact that it's a platform texture op queue doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's really not that. Um, it's, it's specific to the renderer and has nothing to do with the platform layer uh, actually at all as far as I can tell, right? So again, if we start pulling this out um, and making this into a, its own sort of separate thing, we then have this sort of texture op queue thing, which is just where you can queue texture uploads to occur uh, and uh, you know continue to move on from there. This part here is not really where we want this stuff to be. Um, we would rather the texture op queue, um, in some sense, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of how to, how to talk about the texture op queue.
I mean, in some sense, it really just should be... I, I'm wondering if it maybe really just should be a blind pointer. A and maybe everyone does have their own NQ for that. I'm just not sure what I think about that. I have mixed opinions. What I would say is I almost feel like we could make the texture op cube be something that's past back from the game as well. Like, if you think about it, you could almost say that the render commands get the platform texture op cube passed back in them, and it's not platform specific. I know it sounds a little weird, but I'm just trying to think to myself, so if I were to do this, could this just be something totally separate from the platform layer at all. And then what happens is the renderer just ends up getting this thing later. Um, and like it just gets specified in here, you know? So, you know, when we, when you get, um, Like when you get game render commands, I'm just thinking like, hey, if, you know, this could just, you could just pass the pointer to the texture op queue here that you wanted. Um, you could even pass as many as you wanted. You could just say, here's all the cues that I was using. And, you know, when, when the thing goes to do its rendering, it just grabs the ones out of there. That kind of seems good to me. So if we look at texture op, which is, you know, which is here, If we just say, look, here are the texture cues to be looking at, you know? Um, then they can just be allocated on the server side. I mean, on the game side, not on the, the startup side. I just, I just don't know if that's right. Because the other way is, you know, we just pass them. You just pass them in, right? Um, I'm having trouble coming up with any argument for either of those. Yeah, so, so I really just don't know. Um, the tricky part about it is because it's called from a separate thread, so it's called from asset loading thread, so as the asset loads complete, uh, they're calling in to, to do that. And the thing that I'm just not sure about is, you know, who should allocate this thing? It doesn't really matter. Uh, and like I, in my head, I just can't come up with that argument for putting it in any particular place. It seems like it doesn't matter where you put it. It could be anywhere. On the one hand, we could allocate it on the game side of things, and then you pass it back in. Um, on the other hand, we could allocate it in the render and then pass it through to the game. 
Uh, I just don't have a coherent opinion. I guess what I'll say is let's go ahead and continue to allocate it on the platform side of things. I guess. Um, because that seems like the sanest thing to do. Uh, and what we're going to probably end up with here, I'm just guessing, uh, is we'll probably... Oh, well, hmm... I mean, another argument would be it shouldn't really be anywhere, and it's just in the renderer, and then you just, the game itself should be the thing that sticks things in there. God. Yeah. That almost sounds better to me. On the other hand, that doesn't support overlap downloads if you want to start them right away. I'm going to say I'm just calling it because it's too much guesswork. I really don't know which one it's going to be. Um, I'm just going to say that what we want to do here is we want to pass it into the game. I'm just going to say we're going to keep it the way it is. If you don't have a good argument for doing something different, then, you know, then don't. Right. I mean, uh, I'm going to call this the renderer texture queue. Um, it's going to look like that for right now. We're going to deal with, we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with all the fallout, um, from that. Uh, I'm going to make ticket mutex. Remember I said, I wasn't sure what I want to do there. I'm gonna go ahead and make ticket mutex uh, a part of the base type system uh, because ticket mutexes are pretty darn important um, or at least having some kind of a ticket mutex uh, is pretty darn important. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter if it's a ticket mutex. Ticket mutexes are fine. They're not anything special. Uh, they're just the one that we happen to use, uh, but you need something, right? So let's go ahead and grab that out here. Um, so that we've got our ticket mutexes. Uh, and that's going to require us to also have our atomics uh, because we can't do anything without the atomics. Um, oops. I missed the cut there. Uh, so let's make sure we've got all those. There's our atomics. Uh, and now we can, we can uh, ticket all day long. Under a texture queue. Render a texture queue. Was this just called texture queue? I don't, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, so now we can move on. Uh, platform texture up queue, texture up queue, this sort of whole situation here. Uh, I just want to make sure that this uh, is still uh, sort of sane. At the moment, it's allocated in this sort of slightly haphazard way. Uh, that's actually probably okay, but I want to clean that up uh, a little bit. Uh, so here's the renderer texture queue, um, and that's just going to be uh, done like this. go oops uh, that way we've got the op queue created uh, and then what we've got to do is actually make sure all this stuff is okay uh, like so All right. 
Uh, so now let's make sure this is working at all. So let's go back to the game real quick. Um, so for some reason, we did not actually get, uh, here's that add up. So texture op queue was set to zero there. Uh, so, oh, duh, uh, because we never actually set it, right? So what we actually want to do is once we get this thing, we want game memory uh, texture queue to equal texture op queue. Like so. All right. Um, so what I want to do here again is kind of uh, make this be something that's a little less uh, janky. It's pretty janky at the moment. Wheel is stuck, there we go. Uh, so what I'd like to do is make it so that anyone who wants to use a texture queue uh, can use a texture queue more cleanly. This requires a bunch of special purpose uh, garbage going on here, which we don't actually want. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna make that part be more sensible. Um, <clears throat> and make it so that it's easier to use, right? Uh, so we're gonna tackle this in a couple steps. The first thing I wanna do uh, is I wanna recognize the fact that allocating and freeing textures is probably not something we wanna do. So before I go any further down the like, how do we set up the allocate, deallocate sort of stuff, what I wanna do instead is switch this over to something which uses a fixed number um, of textures. So what I want to do is I want the user at the outset to say, here's how many textures there are going to be. And I'm just going to talk about those textures, right? Uh, and then most of the time, what you're going to do there is you're going to say, well, whatever texture, I, like most of the time, they're all going to be like 512 by 512 textures or whatever the fixed size is for textures. Uh, but then in certain circumstances, like I said, if we want to have sort of different size textures, that's fine too, right? So what I want to do is get us to a point where we're talking about those things more sensibly. So I'm going to start by saying, let's suppose we just have a fixed number of textures and let's get rid of the notion that we're ever <clears throat> allocating or deallocating a texture in the first place. And let's pretend that the only thing that we do is just update the data that's in a texture. And that's it. Okay, so what would happen if we were going to do that, right? Um, so in order to do that, what we're going to do now is say that, well, in handmade renderer, then the game uh, renderer commands that we're talking about here, uh, we need one more thing as part of this, uh, which is how many textures there are, right? Uh, so there's kind of this, this implicit texture limit here that's like, how many textures do you want there to be, right? Uh, and when you start up the renderer, you kind of need to tell it how many textures you expect to have. Uh, and, you know, it needs to create that many textures for you, right? You need to be able to talk about that many textures. Um, and I want those to be things where you talk specifically about maybe how many of each type of texture. Like, I kind of want to say how many 512 by 512 textures are you going to have? How many you know, arbitrary size textures you're going to have, something like that, right? Um, and so I don't really have much more to say about it other than that's really what we're talking about here is having those sort of um, uh, having those sort of striations. So I kind of need a thing that's like renderer uh, texture group. Uh, and I need to talk about a renderer texture group as being something which has like a texture count set by the user. How many of these do you want? Uh, then a texture dimension. 
which is to say, like, how big is it width and height, right? Um, and finally, uh, I, I'm trying to think if I need anything in here to identify. I don't think so. I think I wanted to say, here's the number of texture groups there are, and here they are, right? Um, I mean, I think that's really all I, all I really cared about was that. Um, <clears throat> so I can't think of anything else we really need to do there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that's what we've got. Um, and so in the game render settings, I'm just gonna say we've got a texture group count and then we've got a renderer texture group uh, that are the texture groups. And that's what the renderer will expect to see, meaning when you do that, it will allocate textures uh, that follow that pattern, right? Uh, and the only thing that I don't know about is how we want to deal with textures uh, that are arbitrary dimension. Maybe we just don't ever want those. Maybe we just force it to have, all textures have to have a size and they have to fall into one of our group sets. Um, I'm kind of tempted to say that you have to do that. And then we just have a texture group that's like, you know, for the cutscenes, it's like, fine. If we have to do a 2048 by like 1024, um, it's only eight megabytes of graphics card memory to store that. If we have 64 of those, um, that's pretty big though. Eh. So I don't know. I mean, maybe what I'd say is maybe we just force the cutscenes to be scaled to 1024 by 1024. I'd rather just make that clean. You could actually still do them at 2048 by 2048 or something if you want, or 10, 2048 by 1024 or something like this. Because, um, hey, when you page them in, you page them in, and then you can page them out when you need them again. Um, you know, and it's not the end of the world. So I... I suppose that's fine, and I think it would be nice to be able to just say everything goes into a group. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's a tough call. It's a really tough call. Uh, we're down to the five minute warning here. We're, we're, are we compiling okay? I think we are, right? I'm done here. Um, so that's really the thing that we'll probably pick up on tomorrow is how we're gonna start doing those texture groups. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to get the texture apps down to something where we don't allocate and deallocate, right? We just say update this texture. And it's always just a, a, a standing store of like, here's all the texture space that you have, update this texture, right? So I'd like to keep it um, in that way. I think we're probably gonna wanna do something where this stuff gets a, a little bit more explicit as well. So I'm thinking maybe we've got a thing that's like this. Um, I'm thinking we maybe have something like this. Don't quote me on that, but it seems like sort of the right thing to do. And furthermore, uh, I suspect we might even do something like say that, actually max push buffer size is sort of a separate thing, but we might say something like this where we actually go and say, look, all of the stuff that you do, it sorts into the texture group that it's going to go to. Um, but 
so that we only issue one render call per texture group. So that we get it down, you know, let's say there's uh, 64 by 64 textures, 512 by 512 textures, and 1024 by 1024 textures or something like that, right? Then we just have three draw calls uh, per depth peel, right? And we don't ever do any of the like um, texture changes or any of that stuff because we can issue those them all on a batch. Uh, has some merit to it. Is it perfect? Probably not. I don't know, but something to think about. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it for today. Uh, we've done a pretty good job, I think, so far, pulling that out. Uh, we got it rendering and running, so now we're just got to improve it, uh, which is not a huge deal. I'll go ahead and go to the Q&A. How would you approach front to back rendering? Uh, well, if you have to render front to back, then you have to sort, right? I don't, I'm not sure what you're actually asking. Like, do you mean, how would you approach being able, to, how would you approach having the game send down the sprites in front to back order? Is that the question? Uh, so the answer is we already did that on Handmade Hero. Uh, you can go look at it. We had a thing that would sort sprites and you could sort them in either order, front to back or back to front. And what I found is it just is not very nice to have to sort sprites uh, because you can't do any sort of complex 3D placement of them. Become it bec If you have a sprite that should be like in front of one thing but in behind another it creates these like weird cycles and you end up with painter algorithm badness so i found having a z buffer was just much nicer uh, so we don't do that anymore but that's what we used to do nick it to 97 is including a cpp file generally a bad idea uh no it's so at the risk of stating the obvious cpp and h are just names you give to files that allow you to organize them however you want. A .cpp file and a .h file are exactly the same. The compiler does not care about the difference between those two things at all, right? Um, so including cpp files and other cpp files is just an easier way than having a make file that has all of these things listed on like a build line, right? Um, so rather than having a thing that's like link all these cpp files together we just include all our cpp files and that way you're done you don't have to have a separate build you don't have to have any of that stuff it all kind of is just nice and clean right uh so including cpp files is great it's definitely not a bad idea it's a great idea uh it's probably one of the best ideas uh in terms of how to do builds but uh you don't have to do it because like i said cpps and h's doesn't matter as long as all the code gets to the compiler uh, whatever works Is it possible to make variadic functions in C when compiling without libc? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, what you have to do is you have to, um, uh, let me show you. Uh, so if you look at varargs, called var args now I don't really remember yeah um, if you look at what happens it's just you need like you know how we have a platform specific switch that says so we know which kind of atomic to call right 
uh, you need to do the same thing for your var args. So when you talk about like VA start, right? You just need to go look and you can see how it works. It's very straightforward. Uh, it's actually just when you finally get down to it. Um, let's see here. Yeah. It's actually just a thing that uses the address of the thing on the stack to find out where on the stack the first argument after it would be. And then each time you peel off an arg, it just advances by whatever the size of the thing would be for that type of argument. Why? Because int size of is the thing that says, look, if this thing is smaller than an integer, then it's an integer size. If it's bigger than an integer, then it is bigger than the integer size, right? But it's, it's the thing that says that the var arg calling convention in C is that you never pass cares or shorts as var args, you always pass integers, right? So if you actually have a var arg function that puts those things on there uh, that are cares or shorts, you need to, instead of moving down that size in the stack to read, what, to read each one, you need to move down by a full integer. So that's what int size of does. And so you have to also do that. Like you need your own version of this macro. But if you just cut and pasted these into your code, on x64, you will just work because that's the calling convention for var args. Done, right? But it only works on x64. You need to have, like I said, a thing that cracks out what platform you're on and then uses the correct calling convention. Now, it may be that this, correct, this is the correct decryption of the stack in terms of memory, it could be that this is correct for all the platforms you care about, in which case you're done. But you may have other, like if, it, if you wanna run on both x86 and x64, for example, this is not the same. Uh, I'm pretty, I, I seem to remember, it's been a long time. I seem to remember the x86 version was different, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, in fact, is this the, are we compiling in, in 32 bit mode or something? Is this the actual x64 code? It may be that this is the x86 code and this is the x64 code because this is our little test project here. Let me just, uh, let me just see if I can make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm definitely correct. It's different. This is the x86 version. Um, that was why I was a little confused. I was like, but that looks like the x86 version. This is the x64 version. So if I change my build configuration, right, you see how that comes in? So this is the version for x64. Um, and so that, again, that's just because of whatever the var args calling convention is, you have to do the opposite of that to peel the things off the stack. It's stupid, right? It's, it should have been part of the compiler as a first class citizen um, because the compiler is the person who knows what it decided to do for stack layout. Uh, and just because it happens to be a standard doesn't seem like a good reason to make the library do it. it it's, just, it's just dumb, but that's how they did it. Um, so, and someone was pointing out that including varargs.h doesn't pull in libc. Yeah, so if you don't mind using the C runtime library's headers, uh, and you just don't want to use the C runtime library's code, you can. You don't even have to cut and paste it. You could just include it and use it. But assuming that you want to get rid of the CRT entirely, like even the include files, then you have to like make your own versions of those macros, but that's it. Why would the person you are helping not want to use a game engine if they're not experienced with 3D programming? 
Um, so they are... Mm. They are somebody who has made many game engines themselves. Uh, and knows what they are doing. And probably would not think that that game engine was very good for all of the other things that they do. Uh, and so they don't want a game engine. They just want a renderer. And of course, things like Unity and Unreal are so god awful, unwieldy, gigantic, unusable in terms of like, you could never just use the renderer from them. Like, forget it, right? You'd be able to learn 3D graphics and write your own by the time you'd ever make that be a sane process, right? Um, so that's mainly the problem, right? The, the person just wants to have a simple 3D renderer they can graft onto their existing engine that already does everything else including run the basic game that they wanted to make in the first place in 2D is like done. So they've got it all, right? Uh, they just don't know enough 3D math to do the basic 3D render. And they're not looking for anything special. They just want like handmade hero style. I've got some cubes. I've got some sprites on the cubes kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, you can understand why they don't want to take the hit of going to some big bloated thing that's not going to work the way they want just for that one piece uh, of, of the game engine when they've written everything else and want it the way they want it, you know? Uh, if that makes sense. Kind of new to the stream, but did you do any sort of batch rendering, like rendering once by sort storing into a texture? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by rendering once by storing into a texture. Do you mean like batch rendering in that, you know, and I have no idea. Why would you store it into a texture? Do you mean like just batch rendering, like put instance lists into a, a, a buffer and then queue the buffer? Because uh, I'm not sure what you mean by storing it into a texture. Because that would be a weird place to store batch information, I would think. I'm not sure why you would use a texture for batch information. Unless there's... Yeah, I, I, I don't know why you would need to do that. Is there a reason you would need to put it in a texture? Uh, Nikito97, does the current renderer support arbitrary meshes or shaders? Uh, no, no, no. It, this is not that kind of a renderer, right? This is a renderer for a specific purpose. Uh, it, it, so I guess it does technically support arbitrary meshes. It's definitely not, does, it doesn't support arbitrary shaders though, if that makes sense. Um, this is not supposed to really have meshes at all. It's supposed to be sprites, but we support a special case of a sprite, which is a cube shape, like a, if that makes sense. When the texture is sent to the GPU, is it a one-to-one -one size ratio or does it get compressed? It's one-to-one -one at the moment. Do you notice the stream went down for a minute around minute 45 of the stream? I didn't really, uh, it didn't, that might've just been a Twitch blip or an internet thing, I'm not sure. It, it wasn't, before we had a problem where OBS actually crashed and I had to restart it. Um, that did not happen this time. So everything was fine on this end, which was good. Thoughts on a simple handmade OBS? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I have some thoughts on it. Um, maybe, like, lock it to one particular type of hardware and just use hardware encoding. Like, NVIDIA chips can just do MP4 encoding. So you could just, like, say, look, this only runs in NVIDIA. The main thrust of the program is I grab the webcam stuff off of the web, off of uh, the USB. I dump that and I let NVIDIA encode it and the other thing, and then I send it out, right? Um, you could do something like that. I don't know. But... Uh, it's going to be nasty whatever you do because just dealing with hardware like that it's always super janky like just it's just janky with the texture system solve our binding texture timing i don't know what that means what do you mean by binding texture timing? Where do you buy your cool hats? Um, I don't really have cool hats. The pig hat was given to me as a gift. I, I don't really have any other hats. Stupid question. But would there ever be need to use compute shaders in the game? Or are we staying away from that side of the UK? We are staying away from that just as being out of the scope of the series. Um, I'm sure you could come up with reasons to use it if you were looking for them. Uh, we don't need to do it, though, and we're, that's too far afield. Uh, Velba says, I mean the time spent in GL bind texture. Yes, this will solve our texture binding problem which I really want to fix because that's the only like slow part of our renderer now really like most of the rest of the render stuff is fine it, it's all good like it's you know it's it's not hyper optimized or anything but it's totally fine texture bind per quad is totally not okay uh, and is just always going to be a problem for the moment um, and uh, so so I feel like that is really we want to fix that in this pass because that's annoying and it should be fixed. And so we should figure out a good way to, to do it. And, I, and I'm going to probably try to do that tomorrow. Yeah. Can we get another lemon grab impersonation for my compilation? Uh, yes, I can. You can. So what I really need is I need, in addition to lemon grab, I need to get, do they have a soft lemon grab? Because I know that, like, like this is regular lemon grab, not soft lemon grab. Soft lemon grab has a white, is, has a white suit. And regular lemon, like, original lemon grab has the gray suit. Um, and so it would be kind of useful to have a soft lemon grab because a lot of the interesting scenes have, like, soft lemon grab and lemon grab together. Um, so the problem is I have to think about, like... Uh, what would be a good uh, what would be a good scene that just has regular lemon grab? Uh, and no soft lemon grab that I can quote. So like um, I already did the one with that's why I am royal and you are servile. I already did this code base is in unacceptable condition. Um, you know, I guess I'm going to have to take it back. I don't know what other lemon grab impersonations I can do that don't have, uh, I, I guess I don't know what other ones I can do that don't have soft lemon grab. You know, I kind of want to do like the one where they play with little lemon sweets. Oh, little lemon sweets. Our oh, son, so precious. Have you enjoyed sitting in your chair? 
What would you like to do now? Go to bed. No, he wants to dance. Oh, dear brother, I really think our little lemon sweets would rather go to bed. See, I need the other one here. I'll fetch our son a sleeping bonnet. Beautiful. Like, you know, it just doesn't work with the other. It just doesn't work without the soft lemon grab. So I kind of need a soft lemon grab. Uh, I think. 12 years dungeon. Seven years, no trials. Come on, let's go. My voice is kind of hoarse. Uh, why do you change to Visual Studio Editor? I didn't change to the Visual Studio Editor. Um, I use 4Coder for my editing, uh, as always. Any idea how to handle different texture when using instancing rendering? Pack all the textures into array and write a, a custom sampler. Uh, yeah, packing into a texture array is a good plan. Um, it really depends on what platforms you're trying to support. So uh, if you're on like a platform that you actually have some access to, you can also just use texture pointers and those just work. Uh, like for example, if you didn't care, if you're just on NVIDIA, you could just use texture pointers and you can actually just put the texture pointer directly into the actual shader like straight in as just as just stuff that gets streamed in from a vertex buffer like that's how direct it is right um so it's really just this stupid old notion that textures are special and that they're not just addresses um that's causing the whole thing but yeah i mean at the moment you kind of have to deal with it why do your function signatures use the internal keyword? Uh, that's just static. I don't like to use static because static has two different meanings and you can't search them. Um, so I, I just redefined internal to be static. So I, and I put that to make sure everything uses it. Do you know if DX12 is going to be needed for making use of the new hardware ray tracing stuff? What alternatives exist and is it going to be worth it? Uh, I, that is all I, I really don't know. What I can tell you is I'm sure that DX12 will not be the only way to access it because hardware vendors are going to want you to use it everywhere um, because it's slow and requires a lot of com uh, computation power. And so they want you to call it everywhere so people will have to buy new graphics cards. That, it's in their best interest to make sure everyone can use it. So I don't think it will be direct X12 only. Uh, but on Windows... Will they backport it to D3D11? That I don't know. Um, so will it only be accessible from OpenGL in DirectX 12? Maybe, maybe it won't be accessible from DX11. I'm not sure. That I couldn't tell you, but I'm sure it will be in Metal. I think it already is, actually. Um, and uh, on Linux, I would assume that it will be, uh, it, that it's gonna be available on OpenGL and Vulkan. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know about D3D11. Uh, they define version of internal storage. So, ah, well, but that's good. So if you can't include the STL in along with any of our code, that's good. Cause the STL is garbage and should never be used for any purpose at any time. Um, so I would, it would be my very fondest hope that you can literally never mix STL code and handmade hero code because like, I don't want STL code anywhere near my code base or anything that could even be considered to resemble my code base or that uses my code in it. The STL is like the worst thing. What's wrong with this shell? Literally everything. Um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, like, 
literally every single thing you could do wrong, they did wrong. I, 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 it would be easier to list the things that they did right. Um, uh, which, which would honestly be an empty page, probably. I mean, it's just a disaster. Now, to be fair, I don't want to heap all the blame on the people who designed the SDL. C++ is not a good language for generic programming. It's a lousy language for generic programming. So some of the things that are wrong with the STL are because C++ is not a very good language for genetic programming. And some of them are because they have, C++ has added features since the STL was architected that would have made it potentially easier to architect the STL to be less bad, right? Um, so, it's kind of both things. C++ is a bad generic language for generics. Even the things that it does have now for generics, it didn't always have. Uh, and the STL was a bad architecture even given that. So it was just, it's like everything is wrong. Like, like everything. I, 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 it's totally not what you would ever want for generic programming at all. I mean, you can start with basic things like it doesn't do invasive lists and stuff like that. Like, like really basic stuff you want with generic programming, it can't do. Um, but it's like everything. Like the way they do iteration is wrong. Uh, the, the choices they made with how you have to specify iterators is wrong. Um, the way they had you be able to set up memory allocation is wrong. Uh, I mean, I, it's... There's nothing good about it. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, look at any other generic library instead. Like it's, it's, it, the STL is the, like the bottom of the barrel um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, right? And I'm including, I'm think I, like, I, I would also include, like, I don't know if standard string is included in STL technically. Like, I don't know what STL's umbrella technically includes, but standard string is also absolutely horrible. So, like, don't use any STL, like, list, map, vector. Those are all horrible. Um, and just the architecture there is bad. Don't use standard string. That architecture is bad. Like, all of those things are really bad. Uh, and never use them for any reason. They're just horrible. Um, but I don't know, like, I don't remember what all other things are in the STL, like what the, I'm trying to think if there's anything in the STL that's not horrible. Um, and I, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, sorry if I called it an invasive list. Intrusive list is what I meant to say. <laughs> Everything should... So a good way to tell if your generic system is actually generic is to see whether the person who's using it can inject it inside one of their own existing things. If they can't, forget it. You're done. I don't, I don't ever want to hear another word from you ever again, because you're not generic. You're a joke at that point. Um, so like that stuff is pretty sensitive for me. Like I, generic means I can target this however I want uh, and I can make sure that it works the way that I want it to work and uh, the STL is not that thing. All right, I'm gonna close down shop. I do think a lot of the things, so one thing that is nice is since they added like auto, the STL, like using it now, like if you can use auto, it makes it way better than it used to be. It still is awful, but 
using SEL without auto is insane. Like, it's so bad, it makes all of your iterators completely brittle. Uh, and it's, it's just horrible. So auto at least got it a little bit better, but you know, it, back before auto, it was like, oh my God. Like, it's just, I, I don't even know how they thought this was acceptable. It's, it's just crazy uh, to think about that they thought this was like a good thing. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you would like to follow along the series at home, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org and it comes with a source code uh, so you can play around with it. Uh, we also have a watch page you can use to watch. It's streaming on there right now. It also has the schedule. So if we're not live, it'll tell you when we're gonna be live. It also has an episode guide you can use to catch up on the series. I highly uh, recommend checking that out. So if you have questions, you can just search for where I've answered them already. Uh, it's a pretty handy tool. We also have a handmade fun page. That's if you're interested in helping fund projects like the episode guide or like the forums uh, that are hosted uh, at Handmade Network. Uh, there's explanations of what it is on there. If you're uh, feeling generous and you want to donate to some of those projects, you can always do it uh, through the Handmade Fund. Uh, and finally, if you want to know what else we're up to at Molly Rocket, you can always check it out by clicking on the Handmade Hero Head. Uh, these are the rest of our pages here you can go uh, check out as well as my blog and other stuff. Uh, that's it for today. I'll be back here uh, tomorrow when we will see what we can do about the texture situation. Uh, I think that's the last major piece that I kind of really want to uh, play with there. Once that's done, we can focus more on just cleaning up the API and pulling things out into useful pieces uh, that uh, are useful like helper functions. But we're pretty good. Uh, so I think we're in good shape and I'm happy with how that went. Uh, that's it for today. See everyone tomorrow. Take it easy and I'll see you on the internet.